Rodeo is America's original extreme sport. With its roots coming from the Old West, when ranch hands challenged each other for bragging rights on who was the best cowboy. Circuit cowboys were the weekend warriors of rodeo. Regular Joes with regular jobs. But come Friday, they pack up and head out to compete in circuit rodeos. Not only for paychecks, but for the same bragging rights that started years ago. Hello again, everyone. Wayne Brooks here saying welcome back to the Golden Spike Event Center for the Wilderness Circuit Finals Rodeo. Joining me, Luke Branquino, the 2004 World Champion Steer Wrestler. We're only halfway through the action. There's a lot yet to come. That's right, Wayne. We have the classic event of saddle bronc riding, team roping, barrel racing, and the crowd favorite, bull riding. Here we go at the classic event rodeo. Saddle bronc riding's coming your way. Last night was the first go around. Here's the results. Rusty Allen did a very good job, 84 points. Cody Wright, 83. Levi Berry, 82. And Sean Moorhead at 79. You know, to impress the judges, there's one thing you've got to do. Follow the rules. Here's the rules of the ride. Saddle bronc riding is considered rodeo's classic event and evolved from the ranch work of breaking horses and training horses. The cowboy sits in a modified saddle called an association saddle, which is held in place with both a front and back cinch. The cowboy takes hold of just the right length of a thick braided rein called the buck rein attached to the horse's halter. When all is right, he nods his head. A successful ride is done by completing a full eight seconds while striving for the best spurring action possible in perfect rhythm with the horse. A cowboy will receive no score if he fails to ride for eight seconds, touches the animal with his free hand, fails to mark the horse out, loses or drops the rein, or by losing a stirrup. Boy, this is the pride and joy of stock contractors all over the United States. Bronc riding time. Little Squaw is the name of the buck and horse from Bar T, the Kirby family. Bold Butler from Leamington, Utah. This is a mare. A lot of people think it's only the studs and the geldings, but no, this mama, she can buck. Look at her. Wow. Oh, wow. Look how much action that horse has right there. Oh. Unbelievable. You know, Bold had a little bit of trouble with his feet. He's not going to be very many points on the ride, but they're going to mark that mare quite a few on the buck, I believe. <laughs> at the Olympics, I'd give him a 10. My gosh, just hanging on to her is a tough job. No day off there. She's really hard to track. You don't, you watch her head, you don't know which way she's going. No, she's pretty rank right there, and he does a good job just staying in the middle of her. Look at how she's, one end's going one way, the other's going the other way, jumping and kicking. That is what you call a bear, or a bronc riding bronc right there. <laughs> you know, right at the last of the ride there, he tried to reach out, extend his legs, and try to get a little piece of it, but, you know, just being there. We're lucky to get a score out of that. Good job, Bold. 71 points. That guy's a cowboy right there, I'll guarantee you. <laughs> Stormy Sagers, Rush Valley, Utah. It's a family of cowboys. River Dance, Barty, Kirby's horse. This horse will dance. Oh, man. Yeah, you know, Stormy, he's been to the Pocatello before to the Dodge Finals. He's also a college champ. And you can see it right here. Look how his toes are turned out. He's doing a good job ahead of that horse. Lifting on his rein. That's a great ride. Tell you what, he never missed a lick either. Never missed a lick. The first few jumps. Look at the first few jumps here. Look at the kick. Pop. Every time she jumped right there was great. She kind of got a little bit weaker toward the middle of the ride, but they're going to like it. Well, I tell you what, he did a good job holding holding his feet right there for the mark out. See, that horse first, uh, first jump out of there was long, and he just barely held in there long enough. Good enough for a 76-point ride. Stormy will take that under his wing and run with it. No sweat. Sean Moorhead, Bear River, Utah. Roney Brad, here's one of your born-to-buck horses right here, two-spot. Yeah, you know, Sean did a good job. 79, one-fourth in the first go-round. Look here, that horse is really jumping and kicking. Sean's got his toes turned out. Kind of gets into the fence right there, which can really throw his rhythm off. Throws the rhythm off and might in turn throw the score off. You know, that's one of the things that I'm glad I would not be asked to do, judge. It's a tough job to decide, hey, you know, maybe he didn't get that great of a shot because the horse got into the fence but again that's rodeo yeah exactly you know these judges there's no instant replays you know they got to go by what they see and you know they do a good job most of the time and everybody makes mistakes i mean that's just part of it you bet all right it was a 74 
That's how they're going to do it. He's not happy with it. Picks up the neck rope on the way back. Thanks for helping clean up the arena, my friend. <laughs> Levi Berry, Garland, Utah, Robin D. This could be a great matchup right here. But you stub your toe on this kind of horse, she will buck you off in a heartbeat. Yeah, exactly. And he did such a great job last night, 82 points. Hopefully you get it done tonight. All right, that's good. Really moving his feet. That horse is kind of getting across the arena pretty fast. And he's doing a good job staying in time with that horse and, and keeping in rhythm. The motion of the feet is so important. From the break of the shoulders back to the cantle of the saddle, he was moving them quickly. and But, like you said, covering a lot of ground. Yeah, you know, he doesn't have much time to really get his feet up there and set them because that horse is traveling so fast. Right there, he's going to be 75 points. If that horse would have set up and bucked a little more, he could have been a few more points. Not covered quite as much ground. Might have helped him a little. Cody Demers, Kimberly, Idaho, all around champion Blue Bell from Kirby's. This is a great matchup here. Yeah, you know, Cody, he's very aggressive in the bronc riding. Also in the bareback riding, you know, this guy's a national finalist in both events, so it'll be a great matchup. This is one of the toughest Whoa. guys I know. But I'll tell you what, you don't see that much from him. I hope he's not hurt. He was holding that left arm walking away. What happened? Uh, that's a big, strong, powerful horse. and looked like his rein might have been a little short and uh, jerked him over the front end. Ouch. Look at it from the backside. Look how big and strong and powerful that horse looks right there. And then he just gets jerked over, and he might have landed on his wrist or his arm right there. Oh, man. I'll tell you what, I hate to see that. I hope he's going to be fine. We're going to give you a great look at your leader. 76 points. It's Stormy Sagers right now in the lead. Coming up, more saddle bronc riding after this. Let's take a look at Rusty Allen twice to our national finals rodeo. Great Pat O'Malley bucking horse called Payday. This could be the one to win. He's in striking distance of that aggregate, 84 in the first round. Yeah, exactly. No Rusty national finals qualifier winning the first round. Horse kind of hesitates a little bit leaving the shoot, but look how much kick and drop that horse has. Rusty's in time, lifting on his rein, toes turned out. That's an awesome ride right there. Pick up men are moving along. Set him down nice and easy. Don't hurt that guy. We need him for a lot more years right there. He is so consistent. Try to pick that apart. You can't. Take a video of his feet. Maybe the first jump. Yeah, maybe. maybe. But, you know, Rusty's such a great athlete, and he knows where his feet need to be every jump, and he does a good job, and you can see it right there. Boy, that horse is just straight back. 83 points. That's the kind of score we were looking for right there. Nicely done. Lance Miller, Panguitch, Utah, slash T-horse again. This guy travels with his wife quite a little bit. She's a barrel racer. Yeah, and she does very well, you know, and it's awesome when you get in the same rig and, and put your money together. Sure helps pay the bills. Tell you what, he knows the horses, too. He's the director. He should know them. You know, and Lance rides Bronx very oh, good. Oh, oh, he gets popped out of his swells right there and oh, lost a boot even. You know, and that's why these cowboys, they'll even powder their boots and wear a size bigger in case their foot does hang up. That way they don't get drug around the arena. You bet. Look at that right foot. It hung in that stirrup. That has got to be one of the worst sinking feelings in your entire life to be on a 14, 13, 1400 pound horse to have your hang, your foot hang. Yeah, exactly. You know, no score. Best luck to him next round. Born to buck, bucking horse. Anytime you hear Robin, you know you're in the right kind. Robin's best. Cody Wright, Milford, Utah. Three times to the final. Another guy here that can ride Bronx exceptionally well. Watch him at the national finals every year. And he knows where his feet need to be. He knows how to handle his feet and his rein. He does a great job right here, and he's going to be a lot of points. Lift and charge, lift and charge. You know, you could have read the newspaper on the moon under that horse about that third, fourth, and fifth jump out. He was getting lots and lots of air. Yeah, and you could see Cody lift on his rein, staying in position, toes turned out. The judges are going to mark him a load of points for the ride and also a ton of points for the buck that that horse uh, provided right there. You bet. I think that horse was worried that he hadn't, couldn't believe that he was still on there that long. <laughs> kind of wrung his head a little bit. <laughs> judges are smiling. Look at this. 87 goes to number one. Woo, that could hold to win all the sack full of money. Good job, buddy. Kalen Downing, Woodruff, Utah. Here's just a good, solid gilding. A nice draw on this pen of bucking horses. Rocky Road from Barty again, the Kirby's. Right there, you can see that he didn't have his feet up in the right position. The judges probably gave him a free roll, being that that horse threw kind of a fit in the chute. So he's just going to go at him now and try to win some money. I got worried there just for a second or two about the third or fourth jump out. He kind of tipped over the right-hand shoulder of that horse. It looked like he was almost out of position there. Yeah, you know, he was, but he did a good job 
you can see see how that horse right there kind of jumps forward oh yeah the horses the judges are going to holler free roll means you don't have to mark them out just kind of get yourself in the right position and you can see right there what you were talking about wayne but he did a good job moving his feet all right just to even hang on to a bronc of that caliber you bet let's mark him up score is 78 points for kaylin 78. you know that's going to put him into third place right now right behind cody wright and rusty allen that was a great bronc ride all right next to go i believe is the matchup of the night right here matt marvel the next generation champion uncle world champ dad a national finalist betsy brown from bar t if he can hang on to this horse, it's going to be awesome. You know, Matt's a great bronc rider. He's been close to qualifying for the national final. Whoa! Oh, oh that horse just d jumped out to the right and jumped right out underneath Matt. Golly, what a horse. You can see right here, there that horse goes, and Matt just lost his swells and couldn't hang on. That's an awesome horse. Look at the athleticism being showed to you today. Wow. Chet Anger, Fielding, Utah. Strawberry Roan slash T. Pat O'Malley's bunch again. You know, 77 in the first round, almost placed. Hopefully, you come back placed in the second round and maybe have a chance at that aggregate title. Hopefully, we can get up into the 80s as well. See what he does. His reign's a little short right there, it looks like, but he's doing a good job controlling his feet. Right there towards the end of the ride, he quit moving them. But, you know, that horse bucked well, and he started the ride good. Maybe they'll mark him some points and let him place. The way that horse had hit it, it almost looked like he'd hit on all four legs at one time kind of at points because he's really springy acting. Instead of having a rocking horse motion, more of a springy type jump to him. Yeah, exactly. You know, that horse's front feet hit and then bam, back feet hit. You know, that's a hard horse to ride. Look there, 77. That's going to let him place right now. We'll see what the last, couple, last guy can do if he moves him out or not. All right. There's the man, Cody Wright, with an unbelievable 87-point ride. What a round of competition. Yeah, definitely. You know, Cody and Rusty Allen just switched positions. Cody, 87. Rusty, 83. Kalen Downing at 78. And Chet Anger, 77. Angie Burton standing by with the number one guy. Let's say hello to Cody Wright. Cody Wright has been competing in rodeo competition all over the country for about 15 years now. Cody, you came out tonight, you had an outstanding ride. You had this horse before. Tell us, what do you do to prepare when you're riding different horses at each rodeo? I, I just try to do the same thing, you know, each time. Nothing, nothing different than anybody else, I don't think. I think we all try to come out and ride the best we can. You make it look so easy. Is it easy for you? It's, it's a challenge every time. I, I just try as hard as I can and hope for the best. And I, that's about all I guess anybody could do. Okay, well good. Well, you had a great ride again tonight. We wish you luck tomorrow. Okay. You're welcome. What a great family guy right there. Total on two. Here it is. Cody Wright's at top of the leaderboard with 170. Yeah, exactly. Rusty Allen right behind him at 167. Then it drops down 10 points to Levi Berry, 157. And then Chet Anger, he's at 154. Don't go away. Coming up next, it's Team Roping. Welcome back to the Golden Spike Event Center here in Ogden, Utah. It's the true team event rodeo, team roping coming your way. Go round number one, it was lightning quick and I think we'll do it again. Yeah, Brian Wynn, Kobe Drake, 6.3 tied with Steve Young and Dusty Morris. Chad Willis, Brian Roundy, they're seven flat, Tyler Bell and Ben Tibbetts, 7.9. It's the rules of the run, team roping style. Team roping is one of the fastest growing events in rodeo. Teams are made up of a header, and a heater. The header starts from the left box behind the barrier and is responsible for making a legal head catch, changing directions of the steer, and then turning his horse to face the heater's horse after the heater ropes the steer's hind legs. There are three legal head catches around both horns, referred to as a slick head catch, a half head, or around the neck. The heater starts from the right box usually doesn't have a barrier and must rope the heels of the steer after the steer changes direction. Time starts when the barrier is released and stops when both team members have roped and face each other with a tight rope between them. 10 seconds will be added to the time if the barrier is broken. Five seconds will be added if the heater only ropes one hind leg. A no time score will be given if the head catch is illegal or if there's a crossfire, meaning the hind legs are roped before the steer has changed direction. 
Let's kick it off with Ralph Gunter of Downey, Idaho, and Greg Bennett from Warren, Utah. A lot of folks don't realize the Wilderness Circuit takes in the southern part of Idaho. It's three states, or uh, two and a half, put together. Yeah, exactly. Um, a lot of these cowboys come from uh, you know southern Utah all the way to Idaho. You know, they got a lot of competition. All right, you can see in the first run, we've already got one penalty, and it was on the very first team. You only rope one hind leg, they get you for a five-second penalty. you got to pick up both. Yeah, that was just a little bad luck right there. He actually had him roped, and it looked like that steer pulled the leg out. You slip a leg, they're going to get you. See how quick they'd have been? 5.7. Yeah, that could win money just about anywhere you go. That sure would have had a chance to win first here. You bet. Brian Wynn and Kobe Drake, Annabella, Utah, and Enterprise, Utah. They were 6-3 and three in their first run. That's the kind of time that if you could just do it three times here at the circuit finals, you're on your way. Yeah, exactly. You know, they did a great job tying for the uh, win in the first go-round. Hopefully they're going to try to come back and do it again. Brian got it on that steer. A little bit running. Oh, that steer runs up the rope right there, and, and his partner misses. They're going to have to rebuild. Right there you can see the header had a long rope, and he's trying to shorten it up to handle this steer a little better and give his healer a chance to get him caught. Boy, that's just not a very good draw. You see how that steer was wanting to run up underneath the header's rope? Yeah. That's yep. just bad luck right there, 24.6. Impressive talent, however, on both ends, the header and the healer, because to rebuild those loops, that takes some practice. I mean, you got to stand around your backyard and figure out how to do that before you can do it horseback running 20 mile an hour. Yeah, exactly. But right here, see how that steer is just trying to get away? Mm -hmm. That's just not a very good draw, and that healer does a good job getting him caught with the second loop. Great job on the header, shortening it up as well. A lot of these indoor rodeos, they've got to do that, and they've got to watch out for the length of that rope. Greg Richens and Brad Freeland, LaPointe and West Haven, Utah. Eight and a half seconds in the first round. Time to beat 10.7. They can do it. No problem. Definitely. You know, they were one out of place in the first go round. Hopefully they come back, be fast tonight, have a chance to aggregate. Header gets it on that steer pretty fast, handles him nice. Healer comes around, two feet. Look there, 7.2. It's going to put him in first right now. Boy, you know, and it, and it looked slow. I think sometimes when they do it so well, they make it look so easy that it looks slow. You know, something I learned when I was growing up is not necessarily fast makes you fast, but smooth sure does make you fast. <laughs> There's not enough O's and smooth to talk about those guys right there. <laughs> nice job. That was a great run, a 7-2. All right, let's see if they can hold on to that first place position. I don't know. We got a lot of talent yet to go, but you never can tell. Chad Willis, Linda Newton, Brian Roundy. We watched them just a couple of months ago down in Southern California really make a lot of money. Ooh. Little bad luck right there. But like we said, there's three loops, so that means a healer could come in and head the steer. He should put that steer on a little shorter rope, which he's doing right now. There you go. To give his header a better handle on that steer. I like to see that. Nothing says cowboy like Ooh. being able to rope both ends and just it's not working out. But I'm impressed, totally impressed with that healer. He just stepped up, roped you by the horn, said, no problem, I'll take this in. Yeah, exactly. You know, that's too bad because they won third in the first round. So that's just a little bit of bad luck right there. All right, here's my long-haired buddy Josie Young in the bareback ride, and we saw him already make a pile of money. Buell, Idaho, and Artie Albanalp, Riverton, Utah. They need to be quick here. They were way long in the first round. Clean it up, guys. You can do it. Yeah, hopefully they get got out of the barrier right there. Josie really stuck it on that steer. Wow, that was a great heel shot right there. Oh, they might have flagged him out for a crossfire. Wow, that was. I'm not sure about that call. We're going to have to watch that in slow motion. I think, you know, I just barely caught it out of the corner of my eye. I think that's what exactly what he did. Yep, yeah, he yep, sure did yep, crossfire yep, yep, yep. him. That steer didn't change directions or was in a forward uh, toe, obviously, you could see right there. And the field judge did a great job on that call right there. Not just the head, not just part of the steer. The whole steer's got to change directions. They just roped a little too soon. That is unfortunate. Tyler Bell and Ben Tibbetts, Pocatello and Blackfoot, Idaho, 7-9 in the first round. Oh, trim about a second off of that. We'll stay in our aggregate. Yeah, hopefully they get it done. The last few teams that placed in the go-round had a little bad luck. Header got it on that steer good. Whoa, Healer didn't have much of a shot right there. That steer got in the wall. When he threw, he just uh, he couldn't get quite under there and missed his first loop. You know, I think he actually bounced the rope off of the fence even right there. He darn sure could have. That was not... You know, it's hard to rope a steer when they get up against the fence, and right there he gets him caught by two feet, but that's going to make him long, 29.6. And a tail. That's yeah. all right. Ooh, that's some bad luck right there. <laughs> We're going to give you a great look at Craig Richens, our current leader with his partner, Brad Freeland. That's a nice, smooth run of a 7-2. They're in the lead. Let's see if they can hang on to it. More coming your way. 
Go round number two continues now from the PRCA Dodge Wilderness Circuit Finals Rodeo. Justin Hodson of West Haven, Utah, and Steve Sherwood from Florence, Arizona. The Sherwood family being recognized before as one of our circuit champions down in the southwest part of the country, the Turquoise. Head and loop, gonna fit? You bet it will. Got it on him. Wow, that was one heck of a heel <laughs> shot right there. I do not know how his partner caught him right there, but that was awesome. But we'll get to watch this in slow motion, and it is unbelievable. Magical healing loop right here. What happened? Look, that steer just gets up underneath him. He just throws it under there from the other side of his horse's neck and catches him around the uh, flanks. That's an awesome heel shot right there. Six and five. That's going to put him in the lead for the go around <laughs> right now. That's amazing. <laughs> That's what you call pantyhosing one right there. <laughs> <laughs> J.D. Devereaux, American Fork, Utah, Nick Hank, Salem, Utah. 13 and four in the first round, time to beat. You just watch the leaders take their position in the number one spot, six and five a second ago. Good head loop right there. He got out of the barrier clean. Healer comes up, two feet. Oh, with a broken barrier, it's gonna make him 15 and five. Wow, that was a quick run. Too bad they broke the barrier. They would have taken over number one real easy. That is just as solid a run as you can look at. Broken Barrier makes it 15.5. Little disappointing, I know, guys. Gosh, great roping, though. John Stafford from Napa. Marlo Eldridge from Napa, Idaho, as well. I think this is the team to watch, the sleepers. Yeah, definitely. You know, a little tough luck. They were, uh, you know, 11-9 in the first round. Hi, hi. Our header gets a good start. Steer's kind of running off to the right right there, but he does a good job getting him caught. Healer gets him caught around the corner. Wow, 6.4 right there. Boy, to catch to catch him that far down the arena, look at that head and horse run. He did put the speed on. Yeah, and especially when they're off to the right because, you know, a head horse has to go left, so they're thinking left. When that steer peels off to the right, he's going to have to go get him, and he does a great job, 6.4. Steve Young in Goshen, Utah, Dusty Morse of Ogden, Utah. Here is a couple of world-class ropers right here. Yeah, definitely. You know, they tied for first in the first go-around. You know, hopefully they can get him tangled up and have a chance to aggregate. Another uh -oh. runner. Oh, well, what happened? He curled his front leg with his rope, and, and if he can't get that out, they're going to take a no time. He's going to try fishing it. I don't know that that's going to come off. No, it there, doesn't look like it. There's only three legal head catches allowed in the team rope. Yep, he let his rope go. Oh, son of a gun. No time. I tell you what, Wayne, the top four teams from the first go-round went out of the average tonight. Boy, that's just strange. Tough luck in the team rope tonight. How about a ride around with our winners, John Stafford and Marlo Elridge. Congratulations, guys. 6.4, nothing wrong with that. You bet. Uh, Justin Hodson and Steve Sherwood, 6.5. Craig Richens and uh, Brad Freeland, 7.2. Ralph Gunner and Greg Bennett, 10.7. Angie Burton, standing by. In the sport of rodeo, arenas will vary in size and shape all over the country. In the team roping event, especially, will affect your run. How is it for you when you come out of that head box? How important is the shape of the arena with your horse, and especially being here in the Golden Spike where it's a little smaller? Well, you definitely have to be closer to the barrier and get a really good start, or else it turns the steers, it changes the steers drastically. The, the good ones are still good, but the bad ones don't, won't give you a chance to win on. It's better if you have a steer that stays out in the middle of the arena instead of off to the left, like, like in the bigger arenas, so that you can keep the momentum of the run together. Okay. And how about for yourself, Marlo? And how important is the horsemanship, or how good does your horse have to be, especially in these smaller arenas, listening to you and when you go in to get those hills? Um, I think any time you can have a, a better horse than anybody else, it's naturally to your advantage. Um, you know, tonight our steer stayed in the middle, and he was just a good steer, but you've seen some of the guys' the steers went off to the left, and it makes it tough. It's hard to catch them over there. I did. I noticed a few of those steers, so does it make it more difficult because it's putting them right there in the yeah, wall? Very much. You know, the header, he can't do his job because he's got to stop and turn, come back up, and the steer's not moving for me to throw and catch. And, you know, if they stay out in the middle, the momentum keeps going and makes it easier for me to catch. Well, you've had a great run. Congratulations to both of you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. It's all about the total on two, and it's Richens and Freeland in number one spot with 15.7. Then you have Hodson and Sherwood, 17.2. Stafford and Eldridge, 18.3. Gunner and Bennett, 24.2. Devereaux and Hanks, 28.9. And Bell and Tibbetts at 29.6. You got it. Ladies, don't go anywhere. We're coming at you. The barrel racing's coming up next. Welcome back to Ogden, Utah. It's the ladies barrel racing coming your way, and what a first round. Take a look. Stephanie Jones, 1367. Norma Wood, 1394. Jetta McCormick at a 14 flat. 
every event in our game has got the rules that you have to follow. Let's take a look at the rules of the run for the ladies in the barrel racing. Barrel racing is the only women's event in a PRCA-sanctioned rodeo. It's a timed event. A cowgirl must complete a cloverleaf pattern around three barrels at top speed without knocking any of the barrels over. The barrel pattern size is decided by the rodeo and the cowgirls and varies from one rodeo to the next. The cowgirls choose which near barrel to circle first, usually determined by which way her horse makes the best turns. Time starts as the horse crosses the electric eye beam at the start line and ends as the horse comes back across the start line. Five seconds is added for each barrel knocked over, and a rider is allowed to touch a barrel to keep it from falling over. A no time can result if a cowgirl breaks the cloverleaf pattern. Stephanie Jones, here's the winner from go round number one. If you run under 14 here, you're doing great. Yeah, and hopefully she can get around these barrels. A little wide right there on the first one, though. You know, she's trying to get around them as fast as she can. Hopefully do what she did last night. Control, is it there? You bet. That's a pretty good run so far, you know. The only thing I've seen, a little wide on the first barrel. 14, 16, that's almost a half second longer than she was last night. You know, I, I don't know if it was all that one barrel, but being wide can do it to you. Jetta McCormick, she finished third in the first go around. Let's see if she can do that again. She was 14 flat. She got around that barrel good right there, getting around the second one. You know, and possibly the ground's a little slower tonight than it was last night. We'll just have to wait and see. Got around the third one good, on her way home. Looks good. Whip and spur. How about 14.09? You can go to the left barrel first or to the right barrel, just as long as you make a cloverleaf pattern. Terry Wood Gates, we've got a mother and daughter team running. Daughter's going to start them off first. Look at that horse swap ends and get around the barrel. Boy, that horse you can see is really digging. You can see the dirt flying, you know, when she gets around the barrels. Yeah, Doing yeah, a yeah, good yeah, job. Yeah. On her way home, this is going to be a quick run. Woo! 13.95, that's the kind of runs we were looking for. You know they only ran four runs under 14 seconds last year, same time, same place, same arena. Let's go to mom, Norma Wood. West Jordan, Utah, mom and daughter, they travel together and they both are great contenders. Boy, that barrel, that horse really got around the first barrel good right there. Got around the second one good, on her way to the third. She can keep him wide, yep, got around it. You know, this, they very well might win first and second. Look here, 13.99. <laughs> Great run. This horse will fool you. I mean, even in slow motion, he looks like he's running really slow. Jana Gibson, Ogden, Utah. She's a little long in the first round. She could clean it up and do some good. Hopefully, you know, like we said, there's a few 13s in the first round. Hopefully she can get under uh, 14 flat, you know, and, and get a chance to win some money. Burn and burn, turn and burn. <laughs> Not bad, 14 and 16. 14, 16, I don't know that's going to win any money, but that's a good run. You know, you can have a bullet for a horse, but it's all about the turns. Holly Sue Richens, Garland, Utah. You know, if she can trim about five one hundreds off of that first round time, she's, I like the chinks. Look at that, she's a cowgirl, I like that. Yeah, and she does, she's doing a great job. She was just one spot out of place in the first go around. Got around that third barrel, maybe just a hair wider than she wanted. But look here, 13.99, that's going to tie her right now with uh, normal wood. All right, good job. Terry Woods in the lead right now with a 13 and 95. Let's go to Jessica Miller of Panguit, Utah. We met Lance earlier, that's her husband. They rodeo together and travel together. That sure helps on the expenses. This sure is a nice horse right here. I've watched this horse at uh, the California Circuit Rodeos and she does very well on him out there. Boy, look at those first two turns. You're in the money. Go, 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 go. That's a great run. Hopefully it's gonna let her place in the, oh, look here, 13.86. Great run. That's going to put her into first place right now. Good job. Hard to tell whether she can hang on to it or not, but that horse can really stretch out and cover the ground. In between strides, he's covering a lot of ground. Megan McLeod, star Idaho. She was under 14 in the first round. Just do it again. You know, a little wide on that first barrel, but got around, and this horse can really run. You know, Megan, somebody I wouldn't be surprised to see at the finals. She rodeos hard, and this horse really works good, as you can see right there. You know, she's going to be fast. Look here, 1394. That's going to put her into second right now. You look right here on the replay. Her horse is a little wide going into the barrel. Coming out of it, she has to lift her leg up because it's too tight, and she does a good job not knocking the barrel over. That's a cowgirl, Callie Jo Parker, Wendell Idaho coming at you now, TW. That was her brother in the steer wrestling earlier. Dad's a hazer, smooth run happening here. Yeah, she's really getting around the barrels good right here. Really smooth, horses, uh, you know, not getting real close to them, but close enough that hopefully they'll let her win some money. 
14.08. I love to watch the horses when they're running for the finish line. You know, when they're pinning their ears and they're really trying hard, you can just see it. You can see it in their eyes. You can see it in their body motion. Knock over one, it's five seconds. Two is ten. And if you knock over three, you get a free truck. No, not true. Just kidding. Here's the leader, Jessica Miller. What a great job. Yeah, right behind her, Megan McLeod, Terry Wood Gates, Norma Wood, and Holly Sue Richens. Angie Burton standing by with our winner, Jessica Miller. She's a happy girl right now. It was a great run for Jessica Miller tonight in the barrel racing. You know, we talk about it all the time, the importance of the horse person relationship. You've only ridden this horse a few times competing in the arena. How important is that for you to bond with the horse in a barrel racing run? I think it's really important because you kind of get the feeling of how they run and everything and and when you switch a new horse there's a lot of new things you have to to get with them. So I'm just glad that my sister was let me borrow her horse up here. You mentioned that it is your sister's horse. What are some of the key things that you look for in a good barrel racing horse? Um, probably speed and the willingness to work for you and to be, you know, for them to be one with you. Tell us a little bit about your run tonight. Um, it just, it felt awesome. There's a few mistakes I made, but we're, we're working out tomorrow again, hopefully, so. Well, if there were mistakes, we didn't see it. You obviously had the fastest time. Congratulations. Total on two. Let's add them up and see what they did. We have Stephanie Jones in number one, 27.83. Jessica Miller, 27.87. Norma Wood, 27.93. Holly Sue Richens, 28.04. And Jetta McCormick, 28.09. Kelly Joe Parker, 28.40. It's time to get a little nervous. Bull Riders are coming up next right after this. If it's danger you want, we've got it, and it's bull riding. Go round number one was outstanding. Sonny Murphy came in with an 86-point bull ride. Gary Shepard and Steve Woolsey tied with an 80-point ride. And then Kelly Crystal at 79 and fourth. It's not just close your hand and hang on for eight seconds. you got to know the rules. Here they come. Bull riding is the most notable of all the events in rodeo. Bull riding requires balance, coordination, quick reflexes, and courage. The cowboy rides the bull with no more than a bull rope and one hand. The bull rope has a heavy cowbell attached to it, is placed around the bull and positioned according to the cowboy's preference and riding style. He then holds onto the rope with his gloved hand. The glove has rosin on it for a better hold. The cowboy takes the rope and wraps it around his hand. The type of wrap and the tightness of the rope varies from cowboy to cowboy. When the cowboy has the right rope tightness, the right wrap, and has summoned his courage, he nods his head to start the ride. A successful ride happens when the cowboy has completed an eight second ride. A bull rider will receive a no score if he gets bucked off before eight seconds, if he touches the bull with his free hand, if he intentionally leaves the chute with his spurs hooked in the bull rope, or if he doesn't have a bell on the rope. When the rider comes off, either at the end of the ride or by being bucked off, the weight of the bell will cause the rope to fall off the bull. Wesley Silcox, Pace in Utah. Remember when you were 19 years old and when you hit the ground, you'd bounce? Here's a guy just that way. <laughs> Top physical condition, great bull wannabe from Marty the Kirby family. You know, this guy rides bulls so good. National finals, he's just gotten off, uh, you know, being in December. Oh, got into, got away from his hand right there, it looked like, and bull tipped him down. Looks like he's a little sore from that fall. Holy cow, looks like it might have hurt him. It didn't look that bad. He was in control for like six and a half seconds. I mean, in perfect control. You know, that was a good ride. Everything was going his way, and then that mm -hmm. bull, like I said, got him thrown away from his hand, I guess, you know, just bad luck right there. You know, it was good luck is that left hind leg of that bull come down and I don't think got him in the leg. Thank goodness. That's well, one good thing. Oh, he got a love tap right wow. there and cut his eye. Sure did. Jason Levitt, Randolph, Utah. Billy Bob will go back to Pat O'Malley's herd. Slash T, no score in round number one. He needs to ride. Come on. Hopefully get done. This big black bull looks big and powerful. Oh, wow. Really throws him down over the front right there. He's lucky he came out of that as good as he did. I wouldn't mind wearing a helmet on that bull. <laughs> that was uh, that was a pretty good bull right there, and a good effort started, and then he just got his feet tipped back, and that bull got him for throw it over the front. No score. And not very much fun either. How about we go to Sean Proctor? You know, here's the deal, guys. The bulls are winning two to nothing. Sean's got a slash T bull called Hemi. 
All we need is a qualified ride. Let's do it right now. You know, 69 in the first round, he's going to try to jump out here and be 80, get this bull covered, maybe go to the lead in the aggregate. Bull's going, uh, you know, into his hand right there. He's doing a good job hustling his feet. Free hand is in a good position, and the bull straightens out, gets him covered. He's not going to be very many points. That bull, you know, darn sure buck, but not just, uh, you know, as strong and powerful as we've seen some. He's happy about it. He's just going to get a score on two. You talked about into his hand. We've got a lot of folks that don't know what that means. Yeah, when that bull starts to turn back, you could see his hands on the inside of the turn, and that's what into the hand means. And a lot of times, if you get hung up into your hand, it, it you know, it could be a bad deal. Good job, 73. Sean, you've ridden two. It's not huge scores, but right now, you're the man. Nate Fly, Lava Hot Springs. We've broken the ice. We've already got a qualified ride. Let's do it again. Just keep going, guys. Keep going. Keep doing what you're doing. Yeah, get him covered. He was no score on his first one, so if he wants to win something, he's going to have to cover these next two bulls. That bull's uh, right there spinning away from his hand. You can see his hands on the outside of the turn, and that bull's doing a good job. I mean, he's doing a good job staying on that bull. He kind of got flattened in there, hard to ride. He did a good job right there. Oh, man. Not the recommended procedure to get off underneath the bull where you can look directly up at his belly. Bad spot to be. <laughs> Especially when those feet are so big coming down at you. <laughs> Watch this right here. Gets under him a little bit. Whoa, good jump right over the top. Hello. <laughs> Yikes, 72. That's fine. He's got a qualified ride. That's all that we're caring about right now at this point in time. Sonny Munns, back to the Munns family. So much respect for the families that carry on the tradition of winning. Hansel Valley, Utah, and revolution from the Kirby. You know, no score in the first round. He's just going to try to get this bull covered. Doing a good job. Bull's into his hand. He's kind of getting tipped off to the side right there, but he's hanging on. He's not letting go. You know, they're not going to mark him very many points because he was not in control of that animal, but he got him covered. Ooh, I'll tell you what. That had to be 8.001 that he was there. But, hey, he was there. That's all that matters. But you can see that scores start dropping i mean dramatically when they get out of control like my buddy just told you about 61 points is what they're going to come in for sunny Munns. Ooh, little dangerous spot right Ooh. there as well 61 for sunny Munns. okay this next bull Bo honk you keep your hand closed you win kelly crystal third generation stock contractor from rigby idaho Here's a tall, thin man who learned how to ride him from the time he was about five years old. He's doing a good job right here. Oh, that bull got him thrown down right there. You know, he's going to be a no score. He placed in the first round. If he can come back and do that in the third round, he might have a chance. Right here, you see that bull going away from his hand. He's doing a good job, and then that bull sets him up right there mm -hmm. and gets him slammed down. Dropped the shoulder on him. No score for Kelly. Little disappointed. He was 79 in the first round. That's a little tough right there. John Proctor, here's a look at your leader right now. 73 points. It's not a 93, but I'll tell you what, when you're first, you're first. That's all there is to it. We'll be right back with more bull riding after this. Welcome back to the bull riding. We're back into the competition with a youngster, Steve Woolsey from Eagle Mountain, Utah. This is a national finals rodeo bull, Nacho, teamed up with the same caliber of cowboy. Exactly. You know, Steve bought his card in 2005. First year to the national finals also, so he's coming on. He's a great bull rider. Look at this bull kicking and jumping. Steve's going to get in the well right there. Oh, whoa. You know, 80 points on his first one. He had a great chance to go to lead in the aggregate, but, you know, that didn't happen. He got bucked off, and he's still hung up. Oh, my gosh. Is he okay? I can't believe he got up and walked away from that wreck. Wow, that was amazing. You can see right here, the bull's really bucking good, and Steve's doing a great job, but he over almost didn't ride him enough with his free hand and got dropped into the well right there. Ooh, son of a gun, this does not look good. Thank goodness for bullfighters. Saving lives is what they do, and he did take a bad whack right there. You know a normal guy, that'd kill him. These guys, they just get up and brush it off and go on. <laughs> That's Here's another exactly look at right. right here. Look at this look. Ooh, Ooh. butted heads. You know, for a guy to get up after you butt heads with a bull, that just shows you how tough these cowboys really are. Thank goodness he hit him in the head. That way he's not going to hurt him. Didn't even ruin the crease in his hat. <laughs> Jerry Shepard, Nephi, Utah, another youngster, slam dunk from Slash T Rodeo Company. He also was 80 in the first round. Let's see if we can get another score. Oh, I think we will. Jerry's got a good bull. He's making a great ride right here. The bull's going away from the hand. Stops, comes 
back into his hand. Gary's doing a great job. He's yeah. moving his feet. Yeah. He got him rode. I do believe that oh, was a yeah. great bull ride right there by Jerry. Now, here's, here's where you come in. You can be a judge for a second. You think he was 73 or more? Oh, I guarantee you he's more than 73. <laughs> he's more than 80 right there. That was a great bull ride on a great bull. Look at this. Come around. Looks like he's got Velcro on. He's so sticky. <laughs> he's in great shape. His feet are right. Arm free. Yep, yep, yep. Looking good. Judges? Hey, how about an 82-point ride? He jumps to number one by a long ways. He'll buy some new teeth with that, you know. Jerry, <laughs> get your teeth. That was a great bull ride. You know, he was 80 on his first one, so he's going to be sitting good in the aggregate. Uh, I pick on that guy. He's a great guy. Good friend of mine. Sonny Murphy, Harryman, Utah. Red Machine from Barty. This is a big brain. He'll whip it down, too. You know, Sonny did good on his first one, 86. He's coming around. That bull's going into his hand, and he's doing a great job riding him. He's in position, kind of getting into the well right there. Oh, I don't know if he covered him, but that was a good bull ride until he got dropped into the well. He's, you know, look, he's looking at the judges. You know, we talked to the Kirby's. They said, you cross a little bit of Bramer in there, and they're going a buck a little different. That's exactly what he did. Yeah, exactly right. And you can see Sonny right there. He's really struggling to stay out of there. But right there at the end, he gets dropped in there. But I think he made this bull ride. Regardless if he uh, looked good or not, he was there. It's an 80-point ride. Put the, together with the 86. How about 166 on two? No problem there. Good job. Jake Wade, Alamo, Nevada. He's pulling his rope tight now. And Mighty Mouse. Now, here's a guy, he's only had his card just a couple of years. He's trying to gain enough credibility to climb up the ladder. You know, this is a really good bull. You see that bull come out there to the right and then go back to the left. Jake's doing a good job. That bull's kind of just running off there. I mean, not really bucking like he, like we've seen him buck. You know, he's not going to be as many points as he wants. But, you know, he's 72 on his first one, so hopefully he can come in and, uh, you know, stay good in the aggregate. You know, you don't see a whole ton of Hereford bulls that buck that good, and this one does. Yeah, exactly. And like I said, I've seen this bull buck a lot better. Just kind of had a day off. Well, maybe it was a good thing for Jake. How about 79 <laughs> points? Maybe that's the one you'd want to draw, huh? We love Jake Wade. Good job, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Ride 2. That's the name of the game here tonight. Brad McKee, Riverton, Utah. Double action. Back to the Kirby's. No score round one. Yeah, he's going to be coming and gunning at these bulls. He needs to ride these next two to have a chance to make it to the for the Dodge Circuit Finals. Bull coming out to the left there. Oh, wow. That bull looked big, strong, and powerful, and he just couldn't hang on to him. You know, I thought we had a shot to stay on him right there. He was moving. He was trying. You know, that bull right there went away from his hand, and he just couldn't hang on to him. No score. We've got it coming up. Take a look at your results. It is Jerry Shepard on top with an 82. Then we went to Sonny Murphy, 80 points, Jake Wade, 79, and Sean Proctor, 73. Angie Burton standing by. She gets the lucky spot to say hello to the winners. Goers, everyone knows that the bull riding event is definitely the fan favorite. Jerry Shepard, you had an outstanding ride tonight. But first of all, tell us what makes you even want to be a bull rider. Uh, first of all, I just I want to be my own boss. I don't like to work. Don't like to get up at seven in the morning and work till five. And I just like the thrill of it. I mean, it's a gen adrenaline rush that I can't explain, and that's what makes it great. Is it's it's something that you can only experience, and that's what makes it great. Well, your ride tonight definitely was a rush for our audience. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your ride and that eight seconds being on that bull? Oh, uh, he was good. Um, so he spun to the right, right in the door, and bucked really hard right around there, and then jumped out of it and went back the other way, and just. I don't know. He was really good to ride, and I couldn't ask for anything better. I didn't know nothing about him when I got on him, but it worked out. So, When you don't know anything about a bull, what do you do? Do you just stick to the basics and go out there and make a ride? Uh, that's what you're supposed to do with every one of them. But, you know, when you get off trying to do something besides the basics, then, you know, that's when things usually go wrong. But you stick to the basics, and everything should ride the, the exact same. So Great. it works out. Well, it did work out well for you tonight. Congratulations. You. You're welcome. There's the results on one and two. Adam up. Sonny Murphy is on top. Right behind him, Jerry Shepard at 162. Jake Wade, 151. Sean Proctor, 142. And then we drop down to a couple guys on one bull. That'll wrap it up for go round number two from Ogden, Utah. On behalf of Luke Branquino, Angie Burton, and the whole crew at the Horse TV channel, this is Wayne Brooks. Thanks for joining us. See you next time.